Hi everyone, welcome back to Z Physics. Today we're going to be talking about current and also the speed at which charge carriers move through a current carrying wire. Now, in order to explain this, we're going to be looking at an equation which is colloquially known as the Nave equation, and we can see why that is the case. Now, just before we do that, though, let's imagine a current carrying wire. So you can see my artistic impression in, uh, of a current carrying wire here on the left hand side. So what does the current actually depend on? Well, remember, the current is actually the rate of flow of charge, delta Q over delta T. So let's say that if we have a little slice through the wire, if more charge passes through that slice in a given second, the current will be higher. In other words, if those charges are moving faster, then the current will be higher. So we know that the current in the wire has got to be proportional to the velocity of those electrons. And now we can introduce this concept of drift velocity. Now drift velocity is actually the speed at which the electrons are moving along the wire. And the word along is actually really, really important. The reason for that is that the electrons are also in a constant vibrational motion due to their, due to their thermal properties, essentially. However, on average, they are moving, they're drifting along the direction of the current. So once again, the drift velocity is the velocity at which the electrons are moving along the wire. The current will also depend on a number of other factors. For example, the charge of those carriers. In this case, those are electrons. Once again, you can see my artistic impression of an electron over here. But however, if there were ions with a much larger charge, then the current will be naturally higher. Additionally, you can see over here that we have the cross-sectional area A. And we can see why the current will be proportional to that. Well, if A increases, let's say that if we have a much larger cross-sectional area, then we're going to have a lot more electrons which are going to be going through. So we can see that the current, for, uh, the current is proportional to the cross-sectional area. Finally, we also have the number density in this equation. So let's say that we suddenly had a lot more electrons. I'm not going to draw a whole bunch of new smiley faces, but let's just imagine that we have more of those electrons where each dot is an additional electron. Then the current will also increase. Notice something really, really interesting as well is that we can rearrange this equation directly for the drift velocity. Let's do that right now. So in this case, the drift velocity V is going to equal to I divided by NAE. And this will allow us to calculate the drift velocity of those electrons along the wire. Just to note, this velocity is actually very, very tiny. So we're expecting the speed to be very, very small. Now let's do an example question. And let's have a look at a past paper question on this topic. This question in particular is from the 2017 Breath and Physics paper from OCR Physics, Physics A, and it is available on the OCR uh, past paper website, for which I'm going to provide a link down below on the description. Okay, now let's have a look at this question. So what I want you guys to do is to pause this video and have a think and try to calculate the mean drift velocity of the free electrons in this thermistor. Okay guys, now let's go through the solution. Because we're looking for the uh, drift velocity, I'm just going to start off by writing down the Nave equation, n is equal to i is equal to na eV, like so. Then I'm just going to rearrange for the velocity. I'm going to get that the velocity, the drift velocity is equal to i divided by na E. Now, in this equation, we don't know what the current is. However, we can really easily figure that out because we have the voltage and we have the resistance, so we can use Ohm's law. We know that the number, the number density of free electrons in this case is 
5.0 times 10 to the power of 25. We're given the cross-sectional area, so we don't need to calculate that, which is quite lucky. And we also know that E is the elementary charge, which we probably remember, and it's also given in the formula booklet. Now, the first job for us will be to calculate the current. And uh, I'm just going to use Ohm's law and just say that I is equal to V over R which is going to equal to 3.0 divided by the resistance, which is 100, which is going to give us 0 0.03 amps. Okay, now we're ready to substitute this back into our main equation. So our drift velocity is going to be 0 0.03 divided by our area. Where's our area? There it is, 3.8 times 10 to the power of minus 6 meters squared, like so. Um, it's always worth double checking the units because sometimes they might try and sort of catch you by giving you, for example, centimeter squared or millimeter squared. So it's just always worth double checking the units on all of these questions. Okay, then we need to multiply by the number density as well. So this was our area. Uh, multiplying by n, which is 5.0, like so, times 10 to the power of 25, and by the electron charge, which is 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19. Now, all we need to do then is substitute this or input this into our scientific calculator. And if we do this correctly, we're going to get that the drift velocity is equal to 9.9 times 10 to the power of minus 4 meters per second. In this case, one of our marks is going to go for calculating the current, the other one is going to go for a correct substitution and final answer. Um, as you can see that the uh, that our drift velocity is actually quite small, so 9.9 .9 times 10 to the power of minus 4, that's only about 0.1 millimeter or so. So the actual electrons are moving really, really, really slowly. Now why is current instant when the, um, when the electrons are moving, or almost instant, uh, when the electrons are moving so incredibly slow is a topic for a whole new video, which uh, I'm going to do soon. But hopefully using the um, Nave equation now makes sense. If there are any questions, please feel free to drop a comment down below and please consider subscribing. Thank you for watching.